Michigan football with Mike Bellotti. And first down at the 45, back to hand up. Ball fumbled, it's loose and picked up. Haberly. Brad Haberly, he's got it, he may score. On the run at the 10, to the 5. Brad Haberly, touchdown Oregon. Brad Haberly picks up the ball. It bounced right up into his chops. Don't. He stumbled and then he went on and took it in for the touchdown. And with that, the Ducks get a hard-fought victory in Tucson, Arizona. The fans there going crazy, although tempered a little bit, a lot of bit, I should say, by Kellen Clemens' injury, which we'll talk about in just a second. But uh, first of all, thank you for joining us today, Joe Santi, along with Coach Pilati. And I guess the first thing, Coach, to get the victory in a tough game where you had to come overcome a lot of adversity. We talked about it after the game. Good teams find a way to win, even games that maybe could have gone the other way. Absolutely. I, I think, again, it was a a game of character and heart and courage by our football team. We jumped off to a big lead and I think everybody thought it was going to be easy and then we just lost steam. We did not have a great offensive performance but our defense took up the slack although they gave up some big plays which was frustrating early. They really bowed their back in the fourth quarter. Our special teams made a statement especially the punt return team in terms of that we knew we we're going against the best team in the nation, uh, best punter and we, we wanted to change that thing. Uh, Overall, it's hard because any win on the road is a great win, especially when you overcome that type of adversity. But losing Kellen Clemens, as you mentioned earlier, uh, it makes it a bittersweet victory. And, Coach, I guess the updated news is not good. It's kind of, it kind of confirms what we all expected, that uh, it's unlikely that Kellen will uh, play again for the Oregon Ducks. Uh, he will be a part of the team and on the sideline. This is the injury, Coach, and uh, just kind of pile drive. kind of came on it. One of those things that happens in football, but you just hate to see it. Yeah, it, uh, he got pulled down and, and sort of whipped in his Cleats caught in the turf, the left foot. That's the trouble with that Bermuda grass right there. You can see it. Uh, the, the defender just rolled over it, just a standard play. And again, probably wouldn't have happened on our turf, but again, that's neither here nor there. It's just a difficult thing for Kellen because a great career, a great leader, a great person, great young man that we'll keep involved in this program because we need him to help with those young quarterbacks. And, you know, he's going to be a little bit... Uh, immobilized for a while. And you know, Coach, uh, there was a little bit of speculation and thought that he might be able to play in the bowl game. That doesn't look like it's possible. No, I, I think it's probably he'll have surgery tomorrow if the swelling has subsided. It's about a three-month recovery uh, and probably the first couple weeks, you know, non-weight bearing at all. So I don't think that's possible and he might be a medical marvel because he's a tremendous young man, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, again, just uh, I want to thank him for what he's done. Uh, amazing turnaround this year, not in terms of what he's done, but just our entire football team. We jumped on his back, and he made this spread offense work, and now he's got to help with the uh, tutoring uh, of Dennis Dixon and Brady Leaf. And knowing Kellen, he'll be there every step oh, of the way. Absolutely. I mean, he's a team player. He always has been, and he always will be. Well, uh, the uh, situation at quarterback, of course, becomes very interesting. We'll talk about that as it goes along, and we're going to get into these highlights because we have a lot to show you from Tucson. I know a lot of you didn't get to see the game because it wasn't on TV due to Pac-10 restrictions. It did not allow this game to be televised to you, so write to the Pac-10 if you want. And uh, Oregon almost, this was their coach. Uh, absolutely. Very frustrating because we had executed it so well in practice all week long, and we just kicked a little bit too hard. So Arizona gets the ball early, but, you know, had some confidence in your defense to be able to do that at the start of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought it was worth taking the risk of the gamble. Our defense steps up. They get a big play on, on first down. They get great field position, but our defense steps up. Cole check on third and six and just drilled by J.D. Nelson as Cedric stepped though. He did not come back in the game after this hit. No, J.D. had a couple of hits like this in the game. He's doing a great job playing that center field, trying to break up any pass opportunities. And we lose a guy in coverage, but he comes up and makes him pay. And the defense ultimately held on this drive. Kovalchek going to be incomplete here. He played for just two series, almost a fumble, but Devin Long got there a little bit too late. Great pressure by Devin Long. They bring the field goal kicker in, and he misses it, sends it right. Yeah, just missed it, and again, I, I we sort of dodged a bullet there, obviously, with the onside kick attempt, and it was great for the defense to step up like that. Offense goes right to work. Clemens to Williams for 18 yards on this play as Demetrius turns it up right here and gets the yardage, and then a big one. Two, three receivers right, Demetrius left. Now White goes to the backfield with Clemens. And Blitz. back to throw. Blitz comes, throws it to Coleman. Got to cut it inside. He's going to get the first down. Still on his feet. Get outside. He may score. 40, 30. He's got speed. They're not going to catch him. He'll go to the 10 to 5. Touchdown, Cameron Coleman. And Oregon strikes. Boom. Just like that. And the Ducks are on the ball with 10, 24 left in the first quarter.
Great job. Early on, we had them on their heels a little bit. This is a play-action screen. We catch them also in a little bit of a blitz. Nice job here by Camerico running through two would-be tacklers. Though, and then he's got to step and it's off to the races. And his he is, as you said, very, very fast with the ball in his hands. Some guys are faster pad-wise. I mean, he seems to be one of those guys, right? I mean, he's he, he really doesn't lose fast. any speed. And he can, some people, when they carry a ball, don't run as fast. But Cameron has that kind of strength. Frustrating play here after Oregon scores on the three-play 80-yard drive. Kovalchek throws it to the outside. The fumble comes out, and it is recovered by the Ducks. But they said that Jackie Bates stepped out of bounds and came back in. And, Coach, it's just a flat-out bad call. I, yeah, I reviewed. The, I cannot see anywhere where he steps out of bounds at any point in time. I, I'm very frustrated it wasn't officially reviewed. I don't know if it was or not, but there the ball is out, definitely. Jackie comes up. You can see him tiptoeing right along the sidelines there. does not step out. Gets the ball in. Yeah. Obviously, just a tough deal. It's a reviewable, reviewable call. They decided not to do it, but hey, the Ducks find a different way to get the ball. Left to right back on the play fake to throw down the middle, and it is intercepted. It is Patrick Chung with the ball, still on his feet, trying to get away from one tackler. Finally, will go down about the 31-yard line. That was like the three Stooges whirling dervish right there. But Pat again comes up with another interception, two games in a row. Great job here. Uh, playing center field, comes over, then just won't go down. Nice block right there by Kwame Ajiman. Huge block, and Patrick Chung takes the ball down. And again, this is like you did when you are a kid, where you yeah. grab the shirt and spin guys around. And, and uh, Oregon, again, with great field position. And so Clemens is going to try and take advantage of it here. Looking for Dan Kaus. We haven't seen a lot of Dan lately, but a seven-yard catch right here. And then third and two. This is the play that I know is frustrating, Coach, because it was there, but the ball gets tipped at the line and have to try the field goal. Yeah, they did a nice job of, uh, of playing soft at the line of scrimmage. And Kellen is not the tallest guy in the pocket. We line up, kick the field goal. Unfortunately, <clears throat> just pull a little bit left. How is Paul Martinez now? Is it, I guess this competition opens again, and is Paul healthy? Well, Paul should be healthy. He wasn't totally healthy. He was out kicked in practice last week, mm -hmm. and uh, so. But I expect him to be back and ready to go. They brought the freshman in. The ball was intercepted from Tuatama. They call a pass interference. I, I, coach, I don't know if you looked at it. We we can't find. I any. have. It's it's very very difficult. There is uh, contact. But the ball's not quite in the air yet. Right here, this ball is thrown up for grabs. It's a fair catchable ball, and uh, our guy does a great job. Patrick Chen should have two interceptions in this game. So Arizona does get the ball after the uh, pass interference call. They got, as you said, Coach, very early. The flag, though, came out very late, so Arizona retains the football. And uh, Tuatama here, the freshman comes in. He completes it to Mike Thomas. It's going to be short of the first down, so the Cats go back to punt with the nation's punt leader back there. Justin Finnessy all the way back on his 15-yard line. Oregon comes and they block it. The ball is blocked, and who's got it? It comes down, and Oregon has the ball at the 27-yard line, and that's a good way to prevent the guy from getting the ball on. Aaron Gibson is one of the quickest people on our football team. You see him come off of that right side right there. He just comes around the edge, blocks it. The perfect technique, takes it right off his foot. And again, uh, just awesome job. We work on this, and we've been getting better and better. So great field position, Coach, and uh, trying to, again, take advantage. I guess that's the one thing is having these great... You could have put this game away early, possibly. Well, we should have. We should have extended that lead dramatically. Again, here we get uh, Garen Strong in the flat. Get up a little bit, get a first down on this quarterback sneak. Nice line surge by right side of our line there. And then you're closing in here on the red zone, and uh, this one gets intercepted by Daryl Brooks. Kind of started with that tough snap where he didn't get a hold of it, and throws into double coverage there. Yeah, poor choice by Kellen. Just forced that ball. Should have come down underneath or taken something else and settled for the field attempt. But he wanted the touchdown. Again, uh, just a little bit greedy. Cats turn him away, and Bell for three yards. Haloti Nada with the stop, and Haloti just fighting through. Guy, he's so tired after the game because he was just held the whole game, and he just fought through it. Here he is again, three and out for the Cats coach, and uh, Justin Finnessy standing back on his own 30-yard line. Over the ball down, lays it back, steps up in a hurry this time, and wobbly kick, not very deep. Finnessy returnable at the 31, right up the hash mark, 33, 35, 40, 45. He's in 30. He's going to take it all the way. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown. Justin Finnessy took it right up the hash mark, and then he just split everybody.
Great job by Justin. Again, he's getting better and better. He was one of the better returners in our conference, in fact, in the nation last year. You can see a couple of blocks just spread it right there, and then he hits it straight ahead, and that's what a great punt returner does, and it makes the one guy miss at the end. It gets a block by Aaron Gibson there on the uh, punter, and it's off to the races. Nobody's going to catch him. Nice job there by Aaron Gibson. 14-0, Coach. You're on top. The big punt return for Justin Finnessy, untouched. And then they come back. Bell loses one. Matt Toyina and Brent Haberly are there to make the stop. And, uh, you know, it's funny how a game can change so much because at this point, really working the line of scrimmage, and they're just having a tough time doing anything. Yeah, and they've got... Uh we're doing a great job controlling line scrimmage right there, get a ball up, knock it down. And that frustrates a quarterback when that happens. It was a quick three and out, Whitehead for two yards here. And then after a completion, it's third and eight at the 39-yard line. In the backfield, Rosario cross in motion, up back to throw. Blitz is coming, picked up, way downfield. He's got Demetrius, waits for it. He's got it inside the 10. He'll go inside the five to the three-yard line. He stepped out at the five. Nice touch here by Kellen Clemens on the pass. Demetrius shows great speed. He's got fresh legs. He's in practice a lot last week due to those bruised ribs, but he's ready to go. Came back with a vengeance here. Waits for the ball and he carries it down to the two-yard line. Just great play. Demetrius is playing at a level I, I just I'm so excited about. 57 yards. In comes Jonathan Stewart. Clemens off a quick toss outside to Stewart. Stewart cuts back. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. Nice job by Jonathan. This is a lot. We don't get up the field as much as we need to. We're going a little bit too laterally with our line, but he just says, heck with it. I'm going to cut it up. Gets there, breaks a tackle right there, puts his head down, breaks another tackle, and then strength and speed to get in the end zone. Kind of become your short yarder specialist, huh? Just so well, strong. he's the strongest, most powerful back that we have. And that will end the first quarter. Oregon with a big one, 21 to nothing. And, uh, you know, when you get up 21 to nothing, intensity-wise, does it change a little bit? You talk about that on the sideline at the end of the first quarter? Well, I, I think it changed, obviously, because we didn't play as well after that. I think the other thing, the wind changed. What happened? All the points in this mm -hmm. game were scored going with the wind. A pretty mm -hmm. significant win. But when you get up 21 to nothing, unfortunately, there's a tendency to relax. We have to combat that, obviously. Uh, I don't think we tried unless we just, we never got our running game going on offense. That was part of our problem. They were doing some things, did a nice job. And then they went back to their running game on defense, and as you'll see in the future. Yeah, the Cats get it going in the second quarter. Tua Thomas starts to get a little more comfortable. The freshman quarterback back there, he forfeits his redshirt season to help throw a scare into that Oregon defense. And we'll talk about that and much more with Oregon football when Mike Malati returns after this as uh, Tua Thomas gets it going. Back, Brennan. This Oregon sports program is brought to you by Kendall Auto Group and Jerry's Home Improvement. Welcome back, everyone. Second quarter action down in Tucson. Oregon up to 14th in the poll, by the way. Just came out in both USA Today and the other poll. Coach, they really started to uh, run the football. What changed? Anything schematically changed? Nothing changed. They just did a better job of... of Blocked into land scrimmage, the back became more patient, saw it read the holes very well, and mixed zone boot with the zone running play, and it uh, caused us to be on a little bit on our heels. It was Bell for five more, and then after an incompletion, it was a third and ten, and two of and a Mike Thomas for 15 yards and the first down. He's pretty good on third down. Yeah, he did a nice job, and again, we're just in, caught in coverage and didn't, couldn't quite cover the man. This time, again, that play action, he goes to the end zone, and he finds Travis Bell for the touchdown. 21-7, to 7, 10 plays, 80 yards, 323. Fatigue an issue at all? They had time of possession double here in the first half. No, not at all. Okay. We, just, we just need to play better on defense. We need to move the ball on offense, which we didn't get a lot of first down. Yeah, this quarter just flew by as well. So after some traded punt possessions, Kellen for six yards. And then here he's going to be sacked on third and four and have to punt. Uh, Ducks not able to get a first down in the second quarter, so your defense really was on the field a lot. Yeah, they were. And again, uh, but it doesn't. We should, still can't give up those type mm -hmm. of running plays. Again, very frustrated with offense. We didn't run the ball well enough to create anything. So Bell with it. He finds the crease, and there he goes. Gone. 50 yards for the touchdown. Makes it 21-14 to 14 at that point. And, you know, as small as the crowd was, I think they said 48. It was maybe 35 to 40 in there. But they were loud. I mean, they were into it after this play. They are very loud. That was, that was the loudest crowd we played in front of this year, other than Oxen Stadium, obviously. Kellen here, again, offense struggling, picks up a yard on the play, and then trying to get it to Tim Day coming up here on third down. 
Uh, 16 total yards in the second quarter. And, um, you know, as well as they started playing offensively, what were they doing defensively to stop this potent offense that you have? Well, what, what happened is we did not protect as well, and Kellen panicked in the pocket right there, didn't need to. They did a nice job of covering down the field. They were also dropping down a seventh defender into the box to stop the run late. And we, again, need to come up with some different answers. This is a big drive because they were complete for nine yards, and then the defense comes up big right here. Just at the 30-yard line of Oregon, to a time of play fake, back to throw. Pressure comes, gets hit, and he'll go down. Back at the 39 of Oregon, Anthony Trucks. Might have been a three-point play right there. Anthony Trucks coming off the edge, does a great job of containing the quarterback. He gotten loose on some bootlegs early. He keeps a great contained rush, and then gets help from Kwame Ajiman and uh, obviously the big man who worked not. And it takes him out of field goal range, which, you know, at the end of a half was just huge. And they do get the sack, and so now it's third and 18, and they try to go to Mike Thomas here, and it was incomplete and almost intercepted by Justin Finnessy, and that's going to pretty much end the half after they punted the football. Oregon still leads it 21-14. to 14. So as you go to the locker room, tough quarter. They had to fight through some adversity, but still leading. We played poorly on both sides of the ball, and we talked about this team has been good because both sides help each other. Offense keeps the defense off the field. Defense comes on, gets themselves off the field, and we gave up the big run. We were unable to run the football ourselves, and that was a problem. We lost a lot of momentum. The, the thing that I talked about the kids have to know was, hey, that was their best quarter. That was our worst quarter. We're still ahead by seven points. Yeah, always having the lead at halftime. Such a big deal. And the momentum, trying to get it changed around. Coming up at the half, let's go to the locker room, looking for that uncle momentum. And they, uh, well, it gives a chance to check in with the guys wearing the funny blazers here at halftime. They are the Bull Scouts that seem to be floating around the Oregon Ducks as of late. That and more coming up next. Welcome back to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, everyone. Now, of course, Oregon is already assured of a bowl game. The question becomes, which one will it be? As always, Ducks a hot property for the bowls because of all the great fans willing to follow them wherever they go. So the game in Tucson was a natural for several officials from bowl games to scout out the Ducks. We saw those familiar jackets of the Fiesta Bowl committee there. And an unofficial scouting visit to see Oregon. Of course, the Ducks would need to go 10-1 and one and get some help to get into a BCS game, but it is still out there. Also, the Sun Bowl at El Paso, who, despite the fact that Oregon has been there twice in the last six years, would love to have the Ducks back, if, if they can get them. They're always an exciting football team, and uh, they're, they've been great when they've come to El Paso previously. Uh, they just, they've got an exciting year they, at 6-1, and one, and uh, we'll see what they do today, but uh, they may go way farther than uh, the Sun Bowl. All right, remember, in case of ties, these bowl committees will get to select a team. So, for instance, if UCLA and Oregon are tied in the league without playing one another, the bowls will get to choose. And you have to love Oregon's chances for the bigger bowl game because of how well the fans travel and fill up those hotel rooms. Now, here's a little refresher course on the Pac-10's bowl agreements. If the Pac-10 champ is not number one or number two, they go to the Fiesta Bowl. But since USC looks to be headed for Pasadena, so the Fiesta Bowl is open for an at-large. Then it's the Holiday Bowl for number two, unless two Pac-10 teams go to the BCS. Then the Holiday Bowl gets to choose its team. Same thing for the Sun Bowl against the Big Ten team. This year, that could be Michigan, the Inside Bowl in Phoenix, then the Las Vegas Bowl, and Oregon likely already past the point of the Emerald Bowl, which takes the sixth-place team. Of course, the Pac-10 agreements for bowls have been criticized hard by Pac-10 fans. Good example is why does the Pac-10's third-place team play the Big Ten's fifth or sixth-place team? And the fact that the Big Ten will have three teams playing on New Year's and the Pac-10 likely with just one. Now, these arrangements are always reviewed, but why not a bowl in Florida for the Pac-10? After all, it costs just about as much to get from Minneapolis to Orlando as it does from Eugene or Portland. So we're wondering, if there was a Pac-10 bowl game in Florida, would you go? Simple as that. Yes or no? Cast your vote at chambersports.com. We'll have the results next week, and we'll make sure to pass that information on to the Pac-10 as well. But think about it. Pac-10 number three gets El Paso. Big Ten number three gets to go to Disney World. All right, coming up, back to the game action. Plenty of time to talk about bowl games over the next few weeks, and we will. But first, Oregon needs to hang on. And it's the defense over and over again, getting the job done. A lot more on that. And Oregon football with Mike Pilate returns right after this. This Oregon sports program is brought to you by Kendall Auto Group and Michael's Leather and Oak. Welcome back, everyone. Let's go to the third quarter. Big 
third quarter. Oregon going into the wind. As you mentioned, Coach, no points scored going into the wind. I thought you were going to get some here at the opening of the quarter because this was a good drive to open the third quarter to get a little momentum back, too. We did a nice job. We talked about changing up what we're doing, getting the ball in the perimeter a little bit quicker, uh, get Garen Strong in a quick screen right there and get about five yards and start off well. This one, Kellen's looking for Demetrius Williams, but a clear pass interference. He got flat out held on that one, so a first down. And then, uh, again, Coach, you talked about moving the ball side to side, and uh, Kellen's to uh, Garen Strong again after this penalty for the first down. See, it goes to the outside. Yeah, we're just getting rid of the ball quickly again. They're, they're packing the box, and we've got a mismatch on the outside. We're going to take advantage of it. Shotgun, two wide left, two wide right. One back. Clemens with a snap straight to throw. Little screen. Get it to Demetrius. Got room. 50, 40, 35. Up the field to the 29 and down. Nice job, Kellen. Nice job, our line. Nice job, Demetrius Williams. Again, this is a screen. We're, again, they're, we're taking advantage of their aggressiveness. Nice job right there on the block to spring him. Uh, you go, Demetrius cuts back right here. Thought he was off to the races, but gets caught. Great job selling that by Kellen. And then uh, Demetrius, will cut back on the inside. Another nice day for Demetrius. 26 yards on the play. Then Whitehead for two yards here. Tough running against the Cats. Tough running. Great block by Kellen Clemens right there, but uh, uh, to no avail. On third and five, Kellen incomplete to Whitehead. And then uh, as he just tried to dump it off, not sure what would have happened anyway if he would have had the completion. So the field goal unit comes in. 41 yards, really needed this one. And uh, this one just again flutters to the right. Well, it wasn't a great snap or hold. Uh, and again, we did not execute very well. It's too bad because I thought that would have been a great moment to get some points on the board right there. Arizona now, their crowd actually came back into the stadium. So many people left after the first quarter. They have more people here, and they're starting to get fired up. This was a big play here. It's Tua Thomas scrambling. This on a third down. He goes down, and they call that a late hit. That's tough. It is tough. I, you know, he's still hitting, just hitting the ground, still rolling, moving. But again, he's hit the ground, so we have to back off that. That would have, we would have out. We would have got the ball back, and that's very frustrating. All starts with this sort of disrupt the timing of the play. Get good pressure there from Devin Long, force him out of the pocket. He steps up, starts to run right here, runs through Haloti's arm. Again, still rolling right there, and there's the hit, and just difficult. Wow, that's a tough one. So that that's not called half the time. I'll just tell you that. In, in, in a sense, too, it's so tough because they have this happen right after it. Instead of Oregon having the ball, they have the ball, and Mike Bell with a big one. That's no different than a turnover, really. No, that is. That's a 40-yard field position change right there. And again, we don't do a very good job of stopping the gaps inside to get the big run. And the touchdown comes on the next play. A little inside screen. Nice play to get to the end zone. Mike Thomas is 21-21. And, Coach, you know, everything's going against your team here. But uh, I thought it was interesting from this point on, even though, you know, you have some adversity, obviously, we're going to see it in a second, uh, the team really stayed together. I noticed that on the sideline. Yeah, it was great camaraderie, great spirit. It wasn't frustration. It wasn't yelling or finger pointing. It was just, hey, we're going to get this thing done. Just believe in what we're doing. And this is the one, of course, we're going to remember forever. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, in case you missed it. Uh, the worst case scenario, Kellen will be out for the year, going to have surgery on a broken ankle. And, uh, boy, I don't know, you, you know, it's just one of those things that happens in football, but your heart goes out to Kellen, such a great young man, and uh, I know he'll still be part of the team coach but sure sure tough it is tough and it, you, you talk about the fragile nature of this game in terms of you hear one play and gone and it really is true in that situation and I think a lot of people talked about how we might expose him to hits running the football but it was just the same thing there are worse hits in the pocket than anything he would get running the football Oregon has to punt it and have to rally almost as if the defense got together after Kellen's injury and just had that will to do this Harris for three and then two Atama incomplete to Thomas this could have been a game changer right here coach yeah, we blew a coverage. Uh, our safety was supposed to be deep, came down low, and uh, obviously we we're very fortunate. So they have to punt it, and here come the Ducks. Tennessee back just inside the 15. Good snap. Rush comes. They blocked it. It's rolling back at a 21. Pick it up. Ducks pick it up. Pick it up. They fall on it. They got a fall on it. It's picked up by Arizona. Back to the 30, down the sideline to the 45, and finally at the 50, and then all the way down to the ball comes loose. But was it down? It was down. A most improbable play. Unbelievable. A tremendous job by Haloti Nada. Just the power of that man coming through there. Knocks the ball, blocks it. 
We're taught to scoop and score when we block the punt. Here we make that attempt. Can't quite get the handle on the ball. Can't get the handle again. She bounces right up to their punter who takes off. And now everybody's, there's nobody there. It was very, very scary. Tremendous job right there slowing them down. Halotinata coming back, getting the tackle again that? after blocking the punt. What an effort. And if he would have had one more yard, that would have been a first down. People should know that. I mean, after all that, one lousy yard. I mean, that was huge. Oregon gets it back. There's a holding penalty here off the Whitehead run, uh, but still a first down. And uh, trying to, you know, a great field position, trying to maybe get some separation here. And that late's just as hit as the other one we saw earlier, to give you an example. And then Dennis Dixon, boy, I mean, to have things go against you, Dennis Dixon gets hit hard here. Yeah, gets hit hard, helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, which was his fault. We fumbled the ball away, too, but we're, maybe the worst-case scenario, he gets out of the game with a concussion, and now we're down to our third-string quarterback with actually no other backup. You see right here, they play this very well. Boom, right there, helmet-to-helmet, -helmet, uh, and he goes down. The ball comes out. It's a good call in that regard, and they get the football. How's Dennis doing? He's fine. He's okay. absolutely fine. He'll be he'll be ready to go, ready to practice on Monday. 3.49 to go in the third, and this one is on the defense now. Two Atama for 16 yards to Kilpatrick, and then here they come. Haberly gets there. So does Devin Long after he slows him down. Anthony Trucks, Haloti's in there. The whole group is in there. Take another look at this one, Coach. It's a great job in coverage. This is a play-action fake. Again, sets up. We're covering the people down the field. Devin gets a piece of him, wheels him around. Then I can't tell who it is. Anthony Trucks and Haberly, I think, are the guys that finish it off. For Tuatama, big third down play. Oregon's defense. They come back to throw with Tom. Throws it up. It is intercepted. Fantasy at the 40, to the 50, down the sideline. 40, 30, inside and out of bounds to the 25-yard line. Justin Finnessy, what a warrior. Again, another interception, another return, and unfortunately, no points. I told him again. I told him three times, <laughs> score, <laughs> score, score. Mm, they had the angle on him a little yeah. bit here, but he, what, he a, what a game. Player of the game, really. Yeah, absolutely. Does a great job there. That's a huge play, and again, great field position created for the offense. 46 yards on the return. That's going to do it for the quarter. Wow, so the fourth quarter coming up, a game that uh, Oregon, obviously, you think you're going to, they're one and five coming in, but their whole season really is riding on this. They've got a lot of momentum, but your guys with two quarter in, uh, injured quarterbacks really coming together. You're right, Joe. In fact, I'll tell you what, when you, you said this earlier about our defense, when Kellen went down, the defense said, don't worry, we've got your back. Come on, guys, we'll get it done. I saw several people go up to Dennis Dixon and say, you're ready to go. We know that. Terrence White had grabbed him, Demetrius Wade grabbed him and said, we trust you, we have confidence, you're ready to go. They did the same thing to Brady when Dennis went down, but it was unbelievable to see that kind of team spirit on the sideline. Confidence, not arrogance, not panic, not frustration, just let's go get it done. All right, coming up, three quarters of football in the books. Nothing has been decided yet. Ducks down to quarterback number three, and an unlikely hero emerges. Oregon football with Mike Milotti continues right after this, a big one in Tucson. This Oregon sports program is brought to you by Albertsons and Bymart. Welcome back, everyone. Oregon and Arizona. Let's go to the fourth quarter. It's hard to explain to people, Coach. I mean, you have Garen Strong taking snaps on the sideline to get him ready uh, about how intense this game was, even though Arizona was 1-5 coming. It was a very tense game. No, it was. There was no question about it. They gained the momentum, and again, their fans did a nice job, and we were struggling a little bit. We needed a spark. Ducks have a 36-yard attempt to take the lead after the Colvin completion, and that would have given you a, a big one right there, but no good. 0 for 3 for Evenson, and uh, they're going to come back, Coach, and Harris, no gain. Haloti again, this one, the defense really starts to step up. Yeah, Haloti makes a big-time play here. He just knocks two guys off and just says, I'm going to find that ball play. They had seven possessions with either a chance to tie or take the lead in this game where the defense stopped them from doing it. 13 yards to the 35, and then another big one, defense saving the day. Behind him in the eye, Bell and Harris in the eye formation. And first down at the 45, back to hand the ball, fumbled, it's loose and picked up by Brad Haverly. He's got it, he may score on the run at the 10 to the 5. Brad Haverly, touchdown Oregon. Brad Haverly picks up the ball Brent and Haverly bounced right up into his in the job. right place he at the right time. Coach, he handed this one right off into his face mask, and Brett, great place, and it was a tailback in Cottage Grove. Yeah, it happens sometimes with young quarterbacks. They don't put that ball down, wear it in the soft spot. Brent picks it up. 
just, just almost loses his balance, cuts back on the quarterback. You know, he's not the biggest, he's not the fastest, but if he measured heart, he'd be off the charts. Look at that cutback, too. <laughs> he was hot. He was all happy about that after. Said, hey, I played. I said, well, you played fullback at Peel. I played tailback. Tailback. There's a, there's a fine <laughs> distinction for him right now. And you can see with that move there, he didn't try to run anybody over. And so Oregon with the lead now. The defense trying to come up and a pass interference this time on the offense. Great job by Jackie Bate. We stress technique to Jackie a ton. And he does a great job there. Gets the P.I. on the offense. Second and 24 to Atama to Johnson. This is all set up after an interception and a couple of punt changes there so this is to the 32 I mean it's just a great catch he grabs on the other side of the guy's head unbelievable catch does a great job on third and nine they dump it to Bell but Haverly is there big play sets up a fourth and five and they're going for it absolutely that time of the game you got to looking for Johnson here is to Atama Ducks gonna rush the three he throws it but the ball gets tipped at the line how about a huge play by Devin Long here Great job by our defensive line getting the hands up to block the ball. They call the pass interference, but it's clear, as you see here on the replay, this ball definitely tipped. Yeah, once it's tipped, there is no interference. So it's a live ball, anybody. And dude, great job by Devin getting the hand up. So Oregon gets the football back, trying to get this one put away. The offense with a big run at a crucial time. Brady will go back and hand it off. Going right, Whitehead. Big hole, 30, 40, first down, midfield, 47-yard line and down. You need big plays at the end of the game. Give it to Terrence Whitehead. He's a, he's a gamer. You can see he does this run right here. Great blocking up front, though. Nice job there. Uh, Cameron Colvin, we're off to the races, and that's a huge play to get us out of the hole. Big field position play, a big time play as well as the clock starts to move a little bit here. And uh, second place, this was a second down play after a short gain, and uh, this was a tough one because Terrence loses big on this one. Nine yards. So instead of a third and short, it's going to be a third and long coming up. Yeah, that's a very difficult situation trying to make something happen. Brady, nice job getting the snap. Good throw to Demetrius Williams for 12 yards, just short of the first down. Fourth and three, decide to win the game right here, or try to. Absolutely. Going for it. Any uh, thought on the sideline, or are you going for it all the way? No, we're, no, I just, I, uh, we talked with uh, Coach Croton. I asked him what play, if he had a play like, and he said, yes. I said, oh, let's go for it. Let's get this thing over right now. And it was there. Finley was there. Yeah, and was there, uh, just a little bit off his fingertips. But also, again, trusting the defense. They got a nice completion here to the 40-yard line, and uh, 5.13 to go. Ducks need another big play on defense, and they get it. That's the 40. Second down. Back, hand the ball off the bell. Up the middle, nice hole. Ball pops loose. Oregon's got it. Blair Phillips as Mike Bell as his second fumble of the game right into the arms of Blair Phillips and Oregon will get it back with 443 remaining. Anthony Trucks makes this play. He comes off again. You see he'll come from the left side of the screen, rakes through the ball right there, boom, knocks it out right into Blair's hands. Great job. Can't be a better time for it again. That's a huge, huge play for us in this whole scheme of things. See Kellen back on the field, helping the teammates. And Coach, what a big drive to end the game. I think that's been lost a little bit in all the plays the defense has made. There's 4.43 to go. And with Brady Leaf in the game, he led a drive that ended the game. Yeah, that is awesome. This is a huge play right here, Demetrius, for the first down. That was a third and ten situation, or third and long. Great job going to the guy he knows is going to catch the football. Gulp. All right Gulp, there. Yeah, almost disaster right there. Again, same thing we talked about with a young quarterback. Sometimes you don't always place that ball where you want it. And uh, for, the, the, the backs are used to get it right Lee. above the soft spot, right the above the belt buckle. Back to throw. Shovel pass. Got it to Whitehead up the middle. He's going to get near a first down. He's got it. Still on his feet now down to the 36-yard line, and that should do it. Huge play. Big call, great execution. Brady on the little dumb screen to Terrence. Terrence again, right there, almost gets caught from that. Runs through that tackle, and great job of blocking down the field. Runs through another tackle to get the first down yardage. A third and 12 play, Terrence for 17. And from here on out, Ducks just have to kneel on it and get out of Tucson with the victory. Wow, the final 28-21, an emotional win. All the adversity, all the injuries, the emotional aspect of all of that, the tenseness of it, but they come together. They get behind each other, and they get the victory in Tucson. This is a chance for somebody else to step up at quarterback, and we're going to see uh, how deep we are. That means we got to pick it up on defense and special teams like we did tonight. And um, just like I said earlier, we got we got to stay focused, keep in the film room, and just and not let it take a big too big of a chunk out of us. Got my number called tonight and tr tried to work it to the best of my ability. I mean, I made a few uh, 
blatant mistakes out there, but uh, I, th I feel we got the job done. If, if one side of the ball goes down, the other one has to pick it up the level in order to win the game. And made it, you know, some good plays. Habs had a good play. Finish had a good play. I, you know, fumbled a dirt and things went our way. We made the plays we needed to make. Yeah, everybody on defense, you know, uh, from linebackers, uh, D line, and DBs, we all had to make plays. And it, and it was key our special teams as well today. Uh, having a big return today, that was key as well. But I mean, I mean, we're just going to enjoy the win and get back and, and try and get focused and do it again. Kellen goes down. You know, we're going to step out behind him. Our defense had this. We knew the whole time we were going to come out with the win. And we knew we had to score on defense. And uh, Vernon Harvey came through with an amazing play and just uh, uplifted the whole team and uh, carried us on to a victory. It's a real, um, you know, emotional for all of us. You know, he's a, he's been a leader for us for like a couple of years now. And um, it's, uh, you know, we, we basically just defensively, we stepped it up for, for him and the rest of the team. You know, Haloti has a great way of always putting things in perspective, but such a mature young man, and, and he's right. I mean, they did come together, and they did, did do it for Kellen, and, and where does the team go from here? Coach, you got a week off, you got the situation at quarterback, and you got a defense that comes together. Can teams rally in a situation like this? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the best thing is we have the bye week because that gives us an extra week of practice to get Dennis and Brady ready to go and get more snaps that way. We also can <clears throat> recover from some of those hanging on, nagging type injuries that occur over the when you play eight straight games, practice for 11 straight weeks. This is a great group of kids. I've said that all along. It didn't matter if you win or lose. This is a great group of kids to be around because they feel just as you saw on the tape. They love each other. They're ready to play for each other, have each other's back. And I, I can't tell you that kind of feeling. When you see it on the sideline, it just makes your heart swell. And obviously, as much as I, I feel for Kellen Clemens and his family and all what he's done for us, we're going to continue to play for him. But we're going to also play for Dennis Dixon and Brady Leaf. That defense stepped up. Special team stepped up, just as Justin said. And it's, again, it's just a greater challenge. These kids have been able to rise to that challenge. And a lot of other seniors on this team that would love to finish this one very special. I mean, 7-1, and 10-1 and one is out there. The next big one is against California in two weeks. Um, do you anticipate Brady and Dennis uh, sharing time, or they can do different things a little bit, to maybe strengths one way or the other? I, you know, that that's a great question. And we haven't had, you know, I haven't had mm -hmm. but about uh, five hours to think about that. But the reality is, Dennis is the starter. Brady will be the backup. We'll work packages in place for both, and we may substitute as as we have with with uh, Kellen and Dennis. It really just depends on how they respond. As I said, it's not really what they do. They do the things that they can do. Now we have to fit the offense to them and their strengths, which I think we've done a great job of. And I, I feel very comfortable that both can run this offense, both can be very successful in this offense. They're different athletes. Dennis is an electric kind of guy, and he's amazing with the ball in his hands. Brady is probably a little bit more poised and very comfortable in this offense, and it's going to do it a different way, but still be successful. And people should know that uh, all those kids on the team have confidence in both of those young men. Very tight-knit team here with uh, the quarterbacks, and of course, Kellen will be there every step of the way as well, helping these guys. All right, another wild day in the Pac-10. We'll catch up on that. And the Ducks hit the bye week, 7-1. and one. After that, it's Jeff Tedford's California Bears into Austin. They escape at home against the Washington State Cougars coming from behind after having an early big lead. That and more coming up next. This Oregon sports program is brought to you by McDonald's and Oregon Community Credit Union. This Oregon sports program is brought to you by Kendall Auto Group and Jerry's Home Improvement. Welcome back, everyone. Big uh, day in the Pac-10. You got USC beating Washington and blowing them out as they, you know, we expected. UCLA took care of Oregon State. Those two teams look like they're on a collision course because they're very good. Uh, Stanford beat ASU. Stanford's really coming on. And then California. They escape and they come back and they beat Washington State. It's a very good football team. Offensively, they can really score. Yeah, there, you know, there's a lot of offense going on in the conference, and mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult defensively, I think, to stop people now with the nature of the quarterbacks and the receivers and the spread offense makes it difficult. Last two years, Coach, the Cal game has been the pivotal game, and people forget last year you were in the conference race with three games to go when you lost the game at California. How close was it? I mean, pivotal. The year before, we all know what happened with Tim Day. Absolutely. The, you know, the Bears are a good football team. Their quarterback's getting better and better. Uh, they've had bouts of time where they don't play great defense and again I haven't had a chance to watch them on film to really know we'll start looking at it and here's the final play for Washington State on fourth down as they tried to get it something didn't look great but tough loss for them as Cal scored two touchdowns in the final seven minutes we'll have a lot of time to talk about that in a couple of weeks a lot of time to talk about that.